Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing my first budget for 2021 and I haven't done a budget video in a very, very long time. So I'm excited to get started. So yeah, let's just let's just get into it. So this is just my budget planner, my 7x9 Erin Condren monthly planner. Um, I already have like my monthly spread set up. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit closer. So as you can see, there's not a lot going on. All these stickers are from my Etsy shop and I have a link to that in my description if you guys are interested. I just made a very simple spread. I have a couple bill stickers and I know it's kind of shocking how little of bills I have. You won't be seeing any rent or utilities in my budgets because uh, my husband receives a military housing allowance and we live on base so they take it out of the paycheck like automatically so we don't even see that so I really don't have to track it yeah the only thing that I am tracking is my credit card my phone bill and my internet bill this is just a miscellaneous bill because my son has an appointment later this month and I'm gonna have to pay like is it a copay or is it a deductible? I don't quote me on that. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, I don't track anything like subscriptions because I usually pay subscriptions in full like Netflix. I pay Netflix uh, a year in advance basically by calculating how much it'll cost for the month and then buying a gift card and then just putting it on the account. So I don't even have to track that in my bank account, which is pretty nice. And then on the side here, I just have all of our debt, our remaining debt, which is just my credit card and then student loans. I haven't paid any student loans all of 2020 due to the COVID forbearance. I know it's gonna pick up again next month. I was planning on repaying it starting January, but I guess it was extended to January 31st. I'm expecting to start paying these next month. But yeah, I just wanted to keep like a little running total over here. I really like doing that uh, because I like seeing this number go down every month. You know, it's pretty exciting. So yeah, this is just what the monthly spread looks like. And then my dashboard, also stickers from my sticker shop. Not sure what I'm gonna be using this for just yet. Um, maybe I might put down like birthdays and events, but nothing too crazy is going on this month. I have a little box here for um, anything I need to remember for this month. For example, like uh, I know Etsy and I think YouTube tax forms are coming at the end of this month. I gotta mail out some birthday gifts and cards. Um, and then on the 15th, I believe there's gonna be a social security tax repayment or something like that um, because of the whole uh, tax holiday thing uh, from September to December. So we're gonna see a decrease in pay starting the 15th. I'm not sure the like terminology of it, but I just know that our paycheck will be decreasing starting that paycheck. And then I just have a little, like, a little reminder of what's coming up next month so I can kind of mentally prepare for that. And then down here, habit tracker no spend. I probably won't be spending anything because the baby's coming and then I'll be stuck at home. Um, and then just cooking at home. I'm gonna try to cook as much as I can before the baby comes because I'm trying to save all those coins, you know what I mean? I feel like I've been doing a lot better at cooking at home and not going out to eat. And I can't think of another habit that I want to track, but yeah. Those are what I'm tracking. Okay, so that's that with the dashboard. Um, now with this budget, I'm gonna be using stickers that I already have, also new stickers in my sticker shop. So if you guys are new here, um, I do have a sticker shop. It was originally called Latrice Papery, but I rebranded and now it's called Stickers by Cindy. It's a printable shop at the moment because my baby will be due and I won't have time to like print and cut stickers. I'm not too sure when I'm gonna start making physical stickers again, um, but for now, if you guys are interested, I have some printable stickers on my shop. And I'm just like using stickers that I have already because I'm trying not to spend a ton of money on stickers and just use what I have. All right, so this is just like a snowflake washi that I have in my shop and I don't have a budget kit just yet. I keep saying that I'm gonna come out with a budget kit and then I never, I don't know. I just feel like because my budgets are so simple, I don't know if people budget would budget the same way that I do. Um, so I, that's why I, I guess I haven't come out with a budget kit just yet, but if you guys do like how I budget and want something like a similar format, let me know. Maybe I can come up with a kit for, you know, budgeting. Okay, and then I'm just using the Erin Condren monthly sticker book for the little title sticker here, because I like, I like the pop of foil, you know. Where's that the middle? Ooh, that's so cute. 
I love that. Okay, I love that. It looks really good together. Um, what I'm going to do first is write down the pay period dates. Usually I budget by paycheck, but because not a lot is going on this month, I'm just gonna do like a full monthly budget. So let's start with the pay periods. The first paycheck for this month will be December 31st to January 14th. Or actually, it's actually the 13th. And then um, we'll get paid again January 14th through Jan 28th. So I have these asterisk stickers. So I'm going to use these to mark the categories that I'm budgeting for. I need to put down income. So let's see. What would look nice for income? I'm going to do the light one. Okay. So asterisk. I'm going to write income. I know that for this paycheck, we will be receiving... 16.96 and 26 cents. But for this one, I'm not too sure because before the whole tax holiday, if that's what it's called, it was actually $100 less. So it was like 15.96 and now with the whole tax repayment, I think they're going to take a little bit more from that. So I'm going to say we're going to be budgeting around 1500. I'm going to try and underestimate our income and just overestimate any expenses just so we're covered. Now, let's just go ahead with the bills. And like I said, I don't have a lot of bills because rent and utilities, we don't ever see that amount in our paycheck. It's already automatically taken out. Subscriptions and little things like that um, already taken care of and sinking funds. And if we have any like birthdays or events or gifts or anything like that, that's already covered with sinking funds. So I don't really track that in our budget for bills. So the first bill is internet. And then we also have our phone bill with AT&T, um, and then I have my USAA credit card. I usually budget by paycheck, and these bills don't come out the beginning of the month. They actually come towards the second half of the month. So I'm just gonna make little X marks here saying, we're not gonna be paying these in this uh, pay period, but we're actually gonna be paying it over here. So I kind of have an idea of how much everything's gonna be. This is gonna be $79.99. AT&T is around $210.80. And then the credit card, I'm just paying $166. I'm paying $166 up until April because that's when the promotional 0% interest thing ends and then also that card will be paid off by then as well. So now the next thing I like to track is all my savings. Always save for sinking funds. I always save for my son and now the new baby, diapers, wipes, if I need anything like that. Sometimes I don't need it for the month, but it's nice to have it set aside. So when he does need it, then I have that money already. And because this is the last paycheck before the whole tax or payment thing, I'm gonna save like that extra amount in this paycheck, but not in this paycheck. And then lastly, I just have the storm mode, which is basically we're saving as much as we can uh, before my husband gets out of the military. He'll be transitioning out around, I think it's July. I just want to make sure we have enough money for our move and just getting ourselves like settled in our new home. So for sinking funds, if you guys have seen my past budgets, I have been saving around $284 a paycheck. After like reevaluating and going over sinking funds again, I'm actually going to be saving $320 a paycheck. It did go up about $40. For Benjamin, usually I save about $100. I'm going to up that to $150 because baby's gonna be here this month as well. So I don't know if there's any last minute things that I haven't thought about, you know? And also because I don't know how much um, the income will be for this month, I'm, I'm probably not gonna do any savings for this pay period. For the taxes, just $100, and I'm not gonna be um, saving anything in this pay period. Storm mode, I usually come back to this at the end when I'm done with like the rest of my budget. So moving on to living expenses. I have things like food. It's not just groceries. I also do takeout in this uh, category. We try to stay within this budget. I usually budget 150 per week and each pay period is about two weeks. This is going to be $300 and $300. Then we have gas. And I only budget about $100 for gas for the two weeks. We live on a very small base and it literally takes my husband about four to five minutes. Yeah, so we don't really spend that much on gas at all. And we only have one car. I think $100 will do. And then for this pay period, I'm only gonna be budgeting $50 because I don't think we're gonna be going anywhere like at all due to the fact that we'll probably have our baby by then. We'll just 
be at home and just enjoying our little one. Another thing I budget for are haircuts for my husband. He gets a haircut every Sunday for work um, and usually each haircut's about $15, so $10 plus $5 tip. I'm budgeting 30 for this pay period and 30 for this pay period. Then the last thing I always budget for is miscellaneous. We do like to budget every dollar and sometimes, you know, it's a little bit scary budgeting everything to zero. So miscellaneous, this is kind of like our buffer, like our $100 buffering in case things come up that we didn't like, we didn't really think about. So yeah, that's basically it. And like I said, for like birthdays and things that are coming up, already taken care of because we have sinking funds already in place. Okay, now um, I'll just put down the total for everything. Okay, so for this paycheck, let's see, 320 plus 150 plus 100, 300 plus 100. 100. Uh, it's going to be 1,100. I'm going to just subtract that from that. So we have 596 that we can throw towards store mode. So I'm just going to say 590. I don't know. I don't know why. Like going to zero kind of freaks me out a little bit. Total here is 1690. And now over here, it's a little bit more bill heavy. 999, 210. 320 plus. Okay, so 1,256. I don't know how much I'm gonna throw at storm mode just yet because I don't know what to anticipate for the income. So I'm just gonna put a little question mark. I'm just gonna stay here at $1,256.79. So yeah, that's basically it for my budget. Um, if you guys are new here, I wanna explain why I budget in these categories. It's because they actually coordinate with our bank accounts. I actually have a bank account for bills. So this is the um, account where my husband's direct deposit goes to, and then I would disperse it between the expenses, checking account, and then our savings. If you guys are interested, I have a little video about all of my uh, bank accounts. We used to have a problem of overdrafting. So when we would pay a bill, sometimes it wouldn't come out right away. And we would also use the same checking account for our expenses here. So now we do just have a separate checking account, mainly for bills. We don't worry about that. We just have enough money in there for all of our bills to be covered. And then for expenses, we used to do cash envelopes before COVID, but with COVID, we did just switch back to using our card. I have to be more mindful of how much we have left for each category. And then for savings, we have a separate savings account for sinking funds. I have a separate one for my son and the new baby. And then for the tax and storm mode, personally, I just put it in with my emergency fund. I already know that we have $1,000 for emergency and then whatever's left is storm mode and then whatever the taxes is. So this has been really helpful for us and just knowing where our money is and not having to worry about, like I said, overdrafting on bills, getting all the money mixed up by just having one savings and one checking. So yeah, I really miss making these budget videos. Um, and also let me know, do you guys want a budget kit like this? Because I can try to come up with something before the baby comes. Um, yeah, get, let me know your thoughts. And for more in-depth pictures of my um, budget, my dashboard, um, like my monthly spread, check out my Instagram at Cindy Latrus. Not sure if you guys are interested, but just throwing it out there, a little shameless plug. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye, guys.